So, Yud Chesem and Aleph, we are discussing the two different opinions. One that says that um, Chava was made from a, a separate entity. She was separated off of Adam. They were made as two entities connected, and then he separated them, or Akash Rocha separated them. Or was it that she was sort of formed out of the tail of Adam Rishon? And that there was initially one, and then ultimately a second creation of Chava from that tail. So, um, so we were. So we basically asked the question: uh, There's a, there's a uh, statement by David Melch Achavi Kidam Sartani. So how do you, if you that the uh, front. Uh, and back, you created me, so I understand according to the one that says that there were two people, the Gemara says it all makes sense. But, um, 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 yeah, so let's start from Bishlema, but the, for one, two, three, four lines from the from the wide lines. Bishlema, Ocha, Lamai, Sabracious. I understand, um, in other words, that. Uh, uh, well, um, right before that, it says Ravami answered that the, it doesn't mean that front and back in terms of physicality, it's in terms of chronology. Achalamai <laughs> Sabracious, it was last in my Sabracious, Vikidem Lepornios, and first for punishment. The Bishlema Achalamai Sabracious, the Ibrad Mali Shops, I get that it was <clears throat> last as far as the creation chrono- chronologically. Um, because he was not created <coughs> until Friday, right before Shabbos. El of a but it means when it says you created me front and back, it means really you created me earlier and later. Meaning you gave me some things later, you and some things earlier. So you made me later, but you punished me earlier. Mahi, what in what sense were you punished earlier? What does it mean, Lepronios, for punishment? Ilemishim klala. If you're referring to the curse. Of of uh, Adam for eating from the Eitz but Adam of the three that were cursed, Adam was the last one to be cursed. So that can't be that you that I was first for the curse. You were last for the curse. El Mabel, rather it means for the Mabel. The Ksiv a Yimach is called a Yikuma Shaprei Adama. Kadosh Baruch Hu basically destroyed all of the world that was anything that was uh, living on the world we adam vad behema from man until adam until the behema so you see that me adam vad behema the that expression means that if, it, when hakosh prochu destroyed the world it was adam that was destroyed first and behema that was destroyed second so that was what that what was meant of ocha vekidem sartani Okay, because you uh, you made me last, but you punished me first. The punishment being the mob. Let's catch up in the Rashi's. My achav kidem. Yeah, so my achav kidem saratani. That's what we're up to. So what is, what does it mean? Uh, front and back. The masha base source, which certainly implies there are two different creations, two forms that that were created. In the initial creation, and he says, "No, it's referring to the Mabul me Adam ad Behema Adam Huska Vepernos Tchila." And when it talks about the punishment of the world, Adam uh, mankind was mentioned first. Okay, this shame is second wide line of on your ches of the middle wide lines on your ches of an aleph. So Bishalom on the Yom of if you t- say. That there was a separate form that Adam uh, and Chav were created together, and you know, basically stuck together um, and facing different directions. The word Vayitzer is, is written with two Yudin to imply the two creations. Okay, the word Vayitzer has a, a grammatical connotation of two creations. What's Vayitzer if you learn that he was made, that she was made out of the tail? Of Adam, what uh, there's no two creations there. That's just a man with a tail. The so answer is Rishim ben Pazi. The Rishim ben Pazi, Rishim ben Pazi says, "Oyli miyitri, oyli miyitri." Okay, um, so uh, he's two woes. Okay, um, woe to me from uh, 
what was created for me and awoke to me from my Yotzri, my, my Yetzer. Let's see, or the other way around. My Yitzri, my Yetzer, my Yetzer Ra, and only my Yotzri. Let's see Rashi. He says, um, the Heinadik Siv, Heinadik Siv, Vayitzer, betray Yudin. So if you learn it was two creations, Adam and Chav, the Masha based Suros. But what does it mean according to the other man? The other man, the Territ says, Oili mi Yitzri, Shemitzarani, im Esse, Ritzon Yotzri. Um, Oili mi Yitzri, Shemitzarani, im Esse, Ritzon Yotzri. My woe to me from my Yetzer, if I follow the ones who created, if I follow the Ratzon of the one who created me, the will of my Creator. I'm going to have my Yetzer Hora nagging at me, so I've got, you know, uh, that issue. And oily mi Yetzri, imesur tsoin Yetzri. If I follow my Yetzer Hora, i got to have to deal with my crater. So if I listen to my crater, i got my Yetzer Hora to attach to me. If I listen to my Yetzer Hora, i got my crater asking me. So you remember where I turn, uh, sort of Adam's bemoaning the fact that, um, you, you, got, you know, you got to watch yourself coming and going. you you got to battle on your hands. So that's what Vayitzer, I guess, was that uh, Adam has this intrinsic ongoing battle between the Eight Sahara and the Eight Tov. Okay, Vaita, back to the Gemara. Bishayim Laman, the Yom if you learned that it was a separate creation of Adam and Chava, you know, it's two forms, okay, and, and Chava was indeed, a, in, you know, in a separate form. Hanadik Siv Zachar and Keva Baram. That's why it makes sense to say that uh, when the Pasuk says he created them man and woman, that w- there was an initial creation of man and woman. Uh, both both ha- Adam and Chava were created at one time, and they were just connected. But there was a man and a woman. Elamad um, Yomar Zona, but if you learn that, that Chava was formed from a tail and a secondary level, my um, what does it mean he created the man, man and woman? He didn't, he created man. The answer is look at Ravo. The Ravo Rami, because Ravo had a contradiction. Ksiv Zachar and Keva Baram. On one hand, it says he made them. He made them man and woman. Uksiv Kibitzelam Alakim Baru Oso. He formed him in the image of Hashem. So what does that mean? We have a, seemingly there's a contradiction here in the Pesukim. Was it him by himself or was it two together? So the Gemara answers. Uh, not the easiest under the concept to understand, but Chila also Machshava Livro Shnayim. Initially, it went in his, into his mind to create them as two. Okay, so again, they, they try to learn this not in chronology, because there is no chronology in time really in a Kodesh Baruch Hu's world, but the, um, the Machshava was, I guess, the end game of a, what a Kodesh Baruch Hu is doing here is for the focus of making them two separate beings. But initially, um, but at the end, at the end, what, what finally actually happened in terms of the actual chronology of the creation, it was one, but there was this vision, I guess, or, you know, that that was the, the vision of what HaKadosh Baruch Hu initially planned um, and which ultimately took place when he separated them. But it's not, so, um, not separated them. When he created uh, Chava from, uh, when he created Chava from Adam, from the, from the, from the uh, tail, that's what, that was included in the initial thought process of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. It wasn't like HaKadosh Baruch Hu changed his mind. Sort of the, so, those, both things appeared in HaKadosh Baruch Hu in, in the, the way he, it was going to go down. So, there was, I guess, an initial thought of how it was going to happen, and then he actually did it. Uh, one of those two where he, he did it by creating Adam by himself. Okay, let's see if Rashi can help us here a little bit. This is um, not the easiest stuff. Oili, um, we did that. Zachar Nekeva Baram, right? Rashi, about six lines up from the bottom. Masha Betchila Bria, so he is Zachar Nekeva. That implies that the initial creation was man and woman. Zachar Mitzadzev and Nekeva Mitzadzev. Like we said, a man from one side, a woman from the other side. But then it says bar oso, mash mechad. It sounds like only one. So Teretz says there were these sort of two, 
there was a pr- process. I guess that's the best way of doing it. And uh, somehow, even though from the Gemara it sounded like there was a chronology, you know, uh, that he changed his mind, they, they want to say it doesn't mean he changed his mind, but there was just sort of a process to the vision of how Kosh Baruch was, was going to do this. So it sounds like there's a contradiction, but in reality, there isn't. Okay. C- continuing, uh, moving right along. Bishleim Laman Diyama of if you learn the, the first wide line, we're up to, of the really wide lines, it's, it makes sense if you learn that there was a separate creation of Chava together with Adam, two, two beings uh, at one time. It makes sense that this was a major operation, yet he separated Adam from Chava from the back. They were connected from the back, and now he separated them. So you got to put the flesh uh, and replace it in order to Fix him up, so it makes sense. Aviska basta daktani closed up the flesh uh, where she was. Elmandiyama zanov, but if it was a little tail and it was you're talking about a small little operation, maviska basta daktano. That's what you just call a little flesh wound that naturally heals. What do you have to have some major surgery for? What, what does the pasuk mean? So Amr Vzvid Vitem Rav Yirmiya Vitem Rav Nachum Yitzchak When Nitzchak Elam Mokam Chatoch, the major surgery was only for the place of incision. In Achlam, it wasn't a major surgery, but uh, they, you know, it was without a, uh, it was no scars were left over. So uh, you needed, a, you know, Akash Baruch Hu, uh, put on his um, his um, what's it called the term? Not the dermatologist. The um, you know, a plastic surgeon hat, and he he performed the plastic surgery in a way that there was absolutely no scars um, left. Okay, so that also, we we defending that position as well. He, all these are attacks, according to the one who says that she was made from a tail. Uh, so now we're going to switch it. It's all good and f- fine if you learn that she was made from a tail. How did you survive even? That's why there's a real building. There's a real, see, you took a tail and you made from tail a, a Chava, that's what you call a major construction job. Elmanio appeared to, but if all you had are two forms already, and all you needed was to separate them, there was no new creation. What's Vayivin? What's the building? There was, uh, you don't need major construction for that. Elmanio appeared to, my Vayivin. What's Pshat Vayivin? Where's the building? The answer is Lugushim and Menasya. Darshim Shim and Menasya. Vivan Hashem Alekim and Satsela. Melamed Shekila. When the Pasuk says that he, Akash Baruch who built from the side of of uh, Adam, Balami Shekila Kadosh Baruch Hu Chava, Kadosh Baruch Hu braided Chava. He he made her all nice. Evil Adam Rishon, and he brought it Adam Rishon. She came Bukar Chayam because in the cities of the uh, by the water, Kairin Lekliyasa Binyasa. When you when you make a nice uh, nice hairdo with the braids, okay, and all pretty, that's called Binyasa. So Hakadosh Baruch Hu was, you know, also not only did he create the Adam and Chava, he actually made her uh, ready for the wedding day. Okay, so he was uh, he was very involved in the wedding. Let's do the Rashi. Mashma um, Vayiven Mashma three lines from the bottom. Mashma Joisa Mechuseres Binyan. Right? Uh, it sounds like it was lack. If you if you have to build, that means you it was lacking a bu- uh, building. It was lacking a structure. So that means Chava wasn't around yet. It seems to indicate that it was only Adam that was created. Maiva even Habnuyava She was clearly already built and standing. All you needed was to separate them. The answer is Shekilo Klia She uh, he braided the hair. So he made her all nice. Um and, uh, you know, fitting for uh, being the bride. Here comes the bride. Um, okay, Dover Acher. Okay, here's another shot. Okay, uh, last line on the page. Dover Acher, even Hashem Alekim. Another shot for the idea of construction. What is the, the word construction come in? Um, bi- and, you know, building. What does building come in? The word Vayiven is referring to the way he built... Chava, that the way he constructed Chava was uh, like a binyan, like an actual construction, like like an actual structure. What does that mean? I'm sorry, kabinyan otzer, like the like you would uh, make a a uh, storehouse. That's how we built Chava. As we turn the page with Chesam and Beis, Ma'itz is there, Rochav milamata, Vakatz milamala. Just like a storehouse is wider on the bottom and narrower on top. They look kabbos aperos, like in order to. Uh, for the purpose of receiving the fruits, right? So you, they would make them wider in the bottom and then it would narrow 
as we go higher. So to a woman is wider on the bottom and narrow on top in order to, for her to receive the baby and hold the baby and carry the baby. That's why she's structured that way with the hips and the whole, and the whole deal. Okay, so that's another shot of Vayiven, okay, that it wasn't a new construction, but it was that the Chachma of Kodesh Baruch Hu that formed her in a way that it was like a binyan, like, like, a, like a structure. Okay, uh, look at Rashi. Yitzhah rochav milamata v'kotzah milamayla. Shema yirochav milamayla, had Chava been wider on top, when you would fill her up with the with the you know with a baby, machbid masya peris alaksolo mata asom. They would uh, you know uh, lean against the walls and lean and make uh, you know make people hunchback and, and leaning. It would be a real mess. So the chacham of our kodesh baruch who created chava was that she was able to carry and still be able to walk straight and not affect her posture and her whole uh, body. Rochava milamayla cholol beis rechem shalah. The opening of the womb uh, where the baby is carried. Okay. Um, okay, Vaiter, four lines from the top. Vyavel Ella Adam. So Akash Baruchu, the Pasik says, Akash Baruchu brought her to Adam. Malamish Asa Akash Baruchu Shushbinus Adam Rishon. So Akash Baruchu um, was a, the Shushbin, the one who handled the wedding and the one who basically planned everything, that he even walked her, in a sense, so to speak, down the aisle. Uh, when he brought her to Adam Rishon, so Akash Baruch Hu, uh, basically was telling us, you know, don't don't uh, limit yourself to what's fitting for you, because l- look what I'm doing. Mikan, from here you see the Godlo Shiasu Shushbinos the cotton that um, somebody great should still be a Shushbinos for the somebody smaller, and it's not beneath your dignity to plan a wedding and making sure that um, there's enough coleslaw on the table. That's all fine and dandy. When you work, when you're working on a wedding, so so covet is not a thing you should worry about. Because Baruch didn't worry about his covet. Well, let it not bother you. Okay, because that's part of a mitzvah of you know helping people get married, and Kish Baruch Hu is give, showing us the way. So uh, look at Rashi. Shushbinos shenistadel bechisuno l'samchay. Okay, you should uh, be involved and work in the. Um, in you know uh, in the preparation of the wedding to and to um, make the chassan happy, and to be involved in the needs of the suda. So nothing should be beneath your dignity in getting a wedding ready for the couple. This is a big deal, and you should throw yourself into it if if that's what you need and uh, you're in that position. Go ahead and do it. Talk happened once where. My wife recognized that there was no wedding planner, and you know that's we ended up. You know, it was a big, big schus that you know we ended up planning the wedding. Like we walked in and we saw that things weren't organized, so she rolled up her sleeves and, and made it happen. Okay, um, okay. So shushbinus, we did that. Okay, weiter. Um, okay, mm, it's a bishlema. Well, I'm sorry. Ulamad yom apirtzov. Okay, so now we have another question. According to the one who says that Adam and Chava were made side by side, right? So we don't know how much time elapsed, but something elapsed before HaKadosh Baruch Hu decided to separate them. So in that brief time, before they each had their own ability to go in their own direction, Umanli appears of Haiminayu Sagi Beresha. Which one went first, right? So you got uh, Adam facing one way, you got Chava facing the other way. Who led and who followed? Okay, so, um, yeah, so uh, we know what most husbands would say, um, who, who does the lead, but let's see what the, what the Gemara says. Um, so he says, Amr of Nachman, Mistavra de Zorcha Sagi It makes sense that Adam led the way. And Chava would actually have to walk <coughs> backwards to follow Adam, as opposed to Adam walking backwards to follow Chava. Why? Why would it make sense that, that Adam led the way? The Tanya. Because we're in a Bryce, Lo Yahalich Adam Achure Isha Bederach. Person should not walk behind a woman, a married woman on the road. I feel should, even if that married woman is your own wife, it's better not to do it. There's two different reasons. But, you know, for a married another married woman, you shouldn't be staring at her. For your own wife, it's more of a, it's more of a you know derech eretz kind of deal that you shouldn't follow your wife. But uh, when it comes to somebody else's wife, it's it's serious. Okay. Um, Nizdam, let's say, so continuing in the Gemara, Nizdam, let's say you find yourself in a very narrow bridge, 
because you're walking a thousand miles from the from uh, you know Central America to to the border, okay, and it's narrow, and you are right behind a woman. He says, "Nizam naloi alagesher yisal kenel itzdadin." So you should try to move her to the side and pass her. You know, if if you can't, you know, in other words, if you have to walk a long way, you know, right behind her, that's not good. So you have to say, "Excuse me," and get in front of her um, and not walk behind somebody else's wife. Uh, over a long distance. And if you let a woman go first in front of you, somebody else's wife in front of you in a river, where clearly there's going to be serious issues as her dress goes up in, in the water, she's going to be exposed. And then that's if you facilitate that intentionally to be gazing at somebody, else, uh, somebody else's wife in an inappropriate state, then it um, uh, sounds like, a, yeah. I don't have to translate but a person loses their chalik in the world to come. You're setting yourself up for an adultery situation. Let's see here. Let's see Rashi. Nizdam Naloi. No, one the Sagi. Mahalik. If as you're going, um, uh, what is the word? Sagi. Um, sagi Beresha, right. So, Mistavid the Zohar Sagi Beresha. The word Sagi is Mahalech. So, it makes sense that it was Adam who went first and Chava followed. Why? Because it says it's not, it's a person not supposed to follow. Al Heretz, Afil Ishto, Shuginaila. It's a little degrading. I, you know, I'm not sure what the Libras would say about this, but it's not respectful for the woman to walk in front of the man. Okay, Nizdam Loyal Gesher. Um, if they came to the to a bridge, Vima Lechas of Adam, and she's walking in front of him, Yisal Kenel at Sudden, the Avril of Fennel. You got to tell her, excuse me, move it to the side and let you walk ahead, but you should not spend the entire time walking behind this woman. It's not appropriate. Benohar, the Medaya Lamana, okay, where the, her skirt's going to go up, and Mustak of Absar, and you're going to see her flesh. Ubeishis Ishkomad is referring to a married woman to look at the at the you know normally covered parts of a married woman and it's not your own wife, that's serious business. And that's that's very dangerous. Okay. Fine. Uh, we're up to the two dads. Uh Viter in the Gemara Tarabonon. So we learned the Brysa as follows. Tarabonon. Hamaratza Mos is the famous uh, Gemara. Hamaratza Mos Isha Miodoliada, the person uh, specifically, you know, counts out money um, for a woman from his hand to her hand, or from her hand to your hand, for the purpose of staring at her. So you sort of, you know, this is a, sort of a little bit of a subterfuge to try to, you know, get a little close and to, uh, you're going to say what pleasure is there in looking at her hand, but, you know, whatever, you know, the, the, clearly that's what he wanted to do. He wanted to look at her and see her. I feel Amazing statement. Even if this person was similar to Moshe Rabbeinu, she kept the term Har Sinai, who was who accepted the term Har Sinai, which amazingly means that you can actually be on, like Moshe Rabbeinu and still fall into this trap of you know maneuvering this situation to stare at her and to look at her. So um, even if you have a lot of incredible uh, accomplishments spiritually, you're not going to be free from the din of Gehenna. Uh, for what you've done here with this maneuvering. And about this person, the Pasuk says, Okay, uh, hand to hand, you will not be free of evil, which means you'll not be free of the din of Gehenim. And it's also alluded to, of course, in Perkyavos, uh, as well, that, um, you know, bottom line is, stay away from other women, and especially married women, you don't want to deal with them in any way where it's giving you pleasure. Um, let's see, Rashi. Hamarat um, you're counting out money. Liyad, liyad. Hamarat samiyad, liyad. Afilu hu kamo Moshe. Shekib el term yad hakosh baruch liyadoi. So that's the expression, yad, liyad. Clearly implying that this person is mamish like Moshe Benu. Okay, Shakibul Tari Miyad Akash Brokli Ado, who Mamish received from his, from Akash Baruch's hands to his own hands the Torah. That's why it says Miyad Liyad Lo Yinakara. That it's telling you even somebody like that. So the Torah, you know, so the Pasuk itself is recognizing 
that this is something that's possible. That you, you know, you, you can't assume because uh, look, at, look at how great I am that I don't have to worry about, about married women. I'm way above that. Uh, no, big mistake if you start getting cocky thinking that um, you're too holy so you're not going to fall into any traps. Um, yeah, incredible lesson. Okay, Viter in Rashi. Um, yeah, I'm, or no, okay, it's Viter. Okay, back to the Gemara. Um, Rav Nachman. So Rav Nachman says, we're still on the subject of uh, who walks first, and etc. that whole idea. Um, Rav Nachman, Noach Amar Tzaya. Noach, the father of Shimshon, was an Amaretz. He was an unlearned individual. Why? Shenemar Vayokam Vayelach Menoch Achri that Menach went after his wife. Sounds like it's a physical, you know, uh, proximity issue that he let his wife go in front of him. And this is really not so appropriate. You should be not, you should go uh, in front of your wife as opposed to behind your wife. Now, does that mean you shouldn't open the door? That's, I think, a different story. Um, certainly in the world of etiquette today, opening the door for, you know, a woman is, uh, but then you try to, don't walk behind her. Um, okay, so let's see here. Rashi, I'm um, already the loy goma derecheretz the masisan the tani leelo yalechad the mafilu achreishto. Okay, because he did not learn derecheretz of the of the brisa that we quoted earlier, which clearly Menorah should have known if he had learned from his rebbeim, he would have known what the brisa says. Obviously, there were no brises in his day, but this is all Messiah from the earlier generations. So clearly, if they're knowing it in the time of the Tanoim, they knew it in the time of Shimshon. This is the way to be, and that you should not be walking behind your wife. Okay, um, Viter, Maske Flor of Nachman, back to the Gemara. Rav Nachman by Yitzchak asks a question, Elamiyata. So wait a minute, if, if every time it says you go after your wife, it means that she's in front of you and you're behind her. He says, uh, the person that says that Elkanah walked after his wife, it's the same, are you, are you calling Elkanah an Amoritz? He was, was, a great, was a great person, he was Shmuel's father, and he was a great man. So you can't say that he was an Amoritz. Where Elisha walked um, behind her, are you going to tell me, or after her, are you going to tell me that there too, Alicia let the woman walk in front of her? That doesn't make sense. Alicia was, again, he was, he was a great Navi. What do you, uh, how could you say that this is a, an expression of a physical proximity deal? It can't be, because then these two great people would also be in the same uh, category as Manoach, and that's not plausible. So, Hachinami, would you say that, uh, that Alicia also walked behind the woman? Ella, Achre Devaraha Veitsasa. So, the shot is that, that he, they walked after, not physically, but in terms of they followed her, her direction, they followed her ways, meaning that what they said, in terms of advice, they went, they went after their advice, as a good husband does, listens to his wife, and you know, when you get good advice, you gotta be ready to, to, to jump on it. So that's what they did. They went after her words and her advice. Hochanami hit to by Minoach doesn't mean he went physically after her, that she walked first. It means that they, he went after her words and her guidance. And that's not a bad thing. That's actually a smart thing. Um, let's see Rashi. Elkanah Navi Haya. Elkanah was a Navi. Kedatani B'Seder Olam, as it says in Seder Olam, uh, you know, a certain sefer that goes through the chronology of Jewish history. V'yavi Ishul Akim El Eli Elkanah. Okay, Ishul Akim. It was referring to Elkanah. Yud Neviim Nikru Ishul Akim. There are ten Neviim called Ishul Akim. Avuhu Echamim, and Elkanah was one of them. V'lekam Emar Amoritz. So you can't say you're Navi and Amoritz. Those are two contradictory terms. A uh, navi is not is not cannot be an amoritz cannot happen. Um, okay, Ooh, let's see. Okay, that's all the rashis we have, and now we are ready to proceed. Um, okay, Amr Vashi, right? That's what we're up to. So back uh, smack dab there in the middle of the Amid. Amr Vashi, Ulamai the Amar of Nachman. According to Rav Nachman, said Menorah Amoritz Hayo. Okay, he says um, that indeed Rav Nachman originally asserted that he was an Amaret. I mean, they asked on him and they gave a different shot, but that was his initial assertion that Menach was an Amaret. I feel be Rav Nami lo kara. It, it, he, it, it, you're, what you're saying is that he wouldn't even know the most fundamental point that they taught in Yeshiva, okay, um, that they teach the little kids in Psukim. I feel be Rav Nami lo kara. Dixiva tokam rifka v'narasevatik havna l'gamalim v'talachna achrayish. 
right? So we're just gonna, we're going to read this um, very soon that uh, Rivka and her you know um, her maidens uh, went on a, on the camels and they went after Eliezer, right? Eliezer it leads the way. So you mean he didn't even read? He didn't come back with Parsha sheets. Al didn't have Parsha sheets when he when he went to Emek or Yeshiva Katana. So um, so like uh, what's the deal? How could that be uh, that he would know that? He says, but um, one second, but the governor Alagaman with Lakh Lakh Ish, Volof Neish. So just look at the Pasik. It says, Achri Ish, it does not say in front of him, even though Rifka was, in a sense, you know, the, she was the star of the show. She was being brought back to be Yitzchak's wife. Nevertheless, Al Tsinus, she went behind Eliezer, not in front of uh, uh, Eliezer. Okay, Amr of Yochanan. Um, Okay, okay, that's that's it. it. Mara just seems to be another nail in the coffin of the position that Manoach was an Amaritz. It doesn't make sense that he was such an Amaritz. He didn't even know uh, Chumash and Rashi. Okay, um, you don't actually you don't even need Rashi. You just need Chumash for this one. Um, Amar of Yochanan. Well, you know. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that. Okay, um, okay. Amar um, of Yochanan. Achrei Ari v'lo Achrei Isha. Better to go behind the lion and not to go behind a, a woman. Okay, so, um, okay, that's interesting. Uh, so better to be Siegfried and Roy and not to be uh, following a woman um, on the road. Better to follow a woman but not to follow Avodah Zorah. Because you're going to be staring at Avodah Zorah. And again, we don't relate so much to this because we don't have the taiva. But uh, when you had the taiva for Avodah Zorah and you start staring at it, it again becomes overwhelmingly p- powerful and very hard to resist. And which is a worse Avera, Avodah Zorah or, or adultery? Avodah Zorah is a worse Avera. So you're better to walk behind a woman and be tempted to, for that than to walk behind Avodah Zorah and be tempted for that. Okay, but what's even worse but if you, um, but it's better to, to walk behind Avodah Zarah, incredible statement, than to walk behind the shul when they daven and you don't go in. And you don't partake in the davening. What you're really saying is, I'm not interested. Okay, and if, you, if you're not interested, then, then you're really, you don't have to worry about Avodah Zarah. You're actually stating to God, I'm not, I have no interest in you, which is pretty much Avodah Zarah plus. Um, you can actually worship about Avodah Zarah and have some distorted view that, you know, you're channeling this into some kind of worship towards God. But here, when you're actually, they're actually praying to God and you're not part of it, and you're sort of protesting and you're not going in, then that is, that's serious business. Rashi. Veloy achre isha eshes ish. Again, when we talk about following a woman, we're talking about a married woman. Walking by a single girl, maybe not the best idea, but it doesn't have that same severity, although, I don't know, now you might argue nowadays, single girls are nidas, so you also have an issue of erva. Um, I'm not sure about that, but, uh, I mean, they definitely are ervas, but the question is, is it uniquely eshes ish because eshes ish is um, even more severe than a nida, or would a nida also count? So I'm not sure, but something definitely to think about. Voyachre avaraz galulim, but uh, better to work to walk behind a married woman than to walk behind Avodah Zarah. Shami Moshech Achara. Okay, you, see, you keep looking at uh, at Avodah Zarah. You might be drawn to it. Far, go far away from uh, your your uh, road. What kind of road are we talking about there? You're referring to the road of Apicursus, the road of Avodah Zarah, the road of heresy. So you don't want to go on that road. Which is why you're not ready, and you start. To, people start reading these books and exploring other religions and finding out. You know that's it's dangerous stuff. Okay. However, but even that is not as bad as somebody walking behind a shul. If you're walking behind a shul when when the uh, shul people are davening, why is that so bad? You look like a like a denier. Um, you're standing right behind the shul. You're ready to come in. You're right by the doorway. You don't walk in, and everyone's davening. So obviously, if they, they say if you have another shul to go to, right? So this is the this is the shul I don't daven in. But now you go into the shul, you do daven in. Okay, then at least you have another place. But hey, this is the minion. This is the shul, and you're right there. And you don't show up. And you don't go into daven. That's a horrible statement, and that's even worse than walking behind a vodazar because. That's only maybe. This is this is de- definitive. You're making this statement. You're not maybe going to do something wrong. You're doing something wrong. Okay, Viter. 
Um, yeah, back to the Gemara. Okay, all of the years that uh, Adam Rishon was uh, excommunicated, he put himself in, in, in banishment because of the Avera that he did. Ruchin Vishidin Okay, he uh, begot somehow um, the spirits and then and, and demons and the Liliths, uh, another type of demon, another type of, of, of spiritual. You know, uh, creation. Shinamar, how do I know that? Because uh, it says, Vaychi Adam Shoshim Ashana, Yolad Bidmuso Kitsalmo, that Adam lived for 130 years, and then he, he begat in his image a child. Michlal, from that I can infer that it, and until that point, Lav Bid Kitsalmo, he did not beget anything in his image, he, got, he begat other weird things that are not in his image, like demons and Liliths and all this other stuff. So, um, okay. So how did he beget them? Um, I don't know. I guess, I mean, he lived with Chav and he begat them? Uh, I don't know. Yeah. So um, let's see. Yeah, so it seems that way. Let's see. Let's see the next kasha. Meisvei. I let me ask you a question. Hoya, Rav Meir, Oimer, Adam Rishon, Chosid, Gadol, Hoya. How could you say that he begat these things here, um, you know, uh, uh, somehow by having relations. Rav Meir says, Adam Rishon Chosid Gadol, he was a great Chosid. Kivan Shor Shnikna Sam Misa Yodai, when he saw that, he, that, that death was caused by his, his um, uh, acting in such an uh, inappropriate fashion than to eat from the Eitz Adas, Yosha Betainis, Meir Shoshim Shana, he sat in, in fasting 130 years, Okay, um, that's a long time. Obviously, he ate at night, but he fasted 130 years in the daytime. And he separated from his wife. Okay, 130 years, he separated from his wife. So how could he beget anybody? I guess Sigmar thought that he was, be- he was begetting these, these demons through living with Chava. That takes care of my issue. And he put these, um, these sort of uh, fig branches uh, on his flesh with these little prickly points to give him a lot of discomfort. So what's going on here? So um, how could he, if he, if he separated from his wife, how did he beget anything? Okay, how did he father anything? And the answer is, No, no, it's referring, you're right, he didn't live with Chava for those 130 years, but he did have um, emissions of sperm, uh, you know, unbeknownst or against his will. You know, obviously at night people, things can happen. So that, that sperm that was put into the world is what begot these demons, uh, but not... Um, but it wasn't anything, it wasn't a, an act of relations, so we take care of that. We'll pick this up tomorrow.